Hi everyone, welcome to my talk, how to build for and market to developers. My name is Frederik, Frederik Ebelzeuser. I am product manager um, and software engineer at, Yat at Yatta. I'm also Eclipse committer for Eclipse Oomph and the Eclipse Marketplace client. And I am the co-head of the Yatta checkout development team. More, so more to us. So more than a decade ago, we started with Yatta to help developers get more and better tooling. <coughs> This is what we are still doing today. We have stepped up and taken responsibility for the Eclipse marketplace to improve open access to um, developer tools. Um, my colleague over here live will talk later today about our development plans and how we intend to re-implement re the Eclipse marketplace, especially on a um, Chromium technology stack. Um, Yatta is also a member of the Eclipse IDE working group and we contribute to various Eclipse open source projects, most re mostly related to the Eclipse IDE and the Eclipse platform. So as I said, for Oomph and so on. <coughs> so what does this actually mean um, that we build tools for a developer? Well, we have one thing in common here, I guess. So our common goal is to increase the um, productivity of developers, us and others, by helping them uh, with better and more tooling. First, so that we all do not have to write boilerplate code again and again and develop the same features, as I said, again and again. And second, that software engineering can be done efficiently and improve people's life. Um, the market for this is actually huge in terms of volume and it's also very broad. Um, it goes from source code management on the one side um, up to static code analysis on the other side. And also, for example, from UML diagrams to um, AI-based um, source code completion on the other side. And the good news is um, that developer tools are on the rise, as you can see on this, this article later on. Um, you probably know that Microsoft acquired GitHub a couple of years ago for around um, 7.5 billion US dollars. Um, at the latest at that time, it became clear that developer tools are um, on the same level than um, huge software as a service models, e-commerce or even search. So in general, you see over there, in general, you see a big increase in funding um, raised by developer tool companies. So the future and the prospects are bright. <coughs> However, um, the market entry for tool developers, tool developers can be very tough actually, because selling developers is actually very difficult. I guess some of you al also made that experience. Um, let me tell you a story how we started uh, with our own product with Yuma Lab almost 14 years ago now. So after initial so what you see here is Yuma Lab. After initial enthusiasm and constant progress in the actual product development, we had to spend a lot of time and money and energy in um, yeah, how to make our product available to the market. We, um, wanted to we actually wanted to focus on um, developing just the, project, just the product as, mu as, as much as possible. And in case of our first product here, what you see here, um, this was building features such as round-trip engineering or additional UML editors. Instead, we spend a lot of time developing um, the next licensing and account management, helped, uh, even helped our lawyers uh, drafting uh, the privacy policy and the end-user license um, agreement, so-called so Euler, um, and had to develop our online shop with invoicing, payment, taxation, and billing that suited to our needs. Well, that was really, really tough and uh, a really waste of time and um, all this overhead uh, just because we want to uh, bring our tool to the market. And um, I guess it's not just an isolated case for, for Yuma Lab. You know, every product that goes to market um, has to integrate with various services or implement them by itself. Whether you are a startup or a large enterprise, you will need at least one or more payment provider a system that takes care about your billing and invoicing, um, services for your sal sales tax if you are in the US or um, VAT calculation if you are a Europe company, uh, a licensing framework, as I said, 
uh, end user license agreements, a login and registration um, service for service for user accounts, um, and a backend for managing subscription at one point. You can either build everything by your own if you had limitless resources, or you can integrate um, yeah, with the different uh, libraries you see here um, and pay the whole money they, they, they want to have. Either way, as I said, it's a lot. Instead, our focus as tool builders should be um, to develop the tool and uh, to, to, to develop the technology instead of integrating um, all the stuff again and again and again. In the end, these issues are all hindering us to actually bring our product to the market, at least on a fast way. Um, and even if you have uh, gotten your product into the market, you will still have uh, to get your users and customers, so the developers, um, through the maze. So actually from searching to finding your product in the endless internet, um, then over a trial and licensing uh, period, and to the end to purchase, and then the actual payment, right? And um, at some point you will find out you will lose most of your prospects and leads along the way. So in my experience, and um, after I talked with um, a couple of People, this because somehow you lose the user somewhere between trial and purchase. Um, maybe an information too much, or one missing, um, a choice too much, or a plan missing, so like uh, monthly or yearly, or a media or design break too much, and your customer is lost, right? The result is getting your product into the market is one thing, uh, monetizing, selling, and scaling it. Uh, on a profitable way is a real other thing um, and something entirely else, entirely else. So what we did, we changed that. Um, I want to show you how we re-implemented our online shop and um, I guess the best way is um, I will do it um, directly uh, live. So <coughs> let's go out here. Well, as I said, our tool um, is, is Humalab, and um, imagine you are a Humalab user, right? Um, you have already downloaded the product, and your trial license has already expired, because we offer user a dry license, and once it's expired, that's the screen you see here. Imagine you would like uh, to purchase the product, um, or more precisely, a product license um, to continue the product. Usually, you would have to order and purchase a license, hopefully at an online shop. Um, so what we did is we also developed a new online shop. Let me show here. Let me show. Um, usually, um, yeah, what we did is we developed a new, new online shop here. And um, for demonstration purpose, let me just reset my subscription here. <laughs> So, um, in fact, we are not happy with the online shops out there, right? You, you probably know Digital River and so on. Um, so we built something which feels more like Zalando. Uh, we call this the Yatta Checkout. Um, actually, it's behind this button. So, because I've already registered with my uh, email as a trial user, and uh, maybe I already bought another tool, um, all the billing informations on that side and all the credit card or payment informations are, are already available. And the only thing I still I want to have to do now as a user is to click on subscribe now. And in the background, everything else is uh, done automatically. Like an invoicing, uh, invoice is issued, the VAT calculation is done obviously, and uh, the license is also checked out. If we now go back to our tool, we see um, it's immediate, immediately available, and uh, we can start um, using the tool. So, in this case, it's pretty easy. Um, that's it. And um, so, to have a comparison, it's like PayPal for B2C, but with an integrated um, uh, licensing and invoicing system, built for specially built for B2B purposes. So, that's that's already pretty, pretty slick. But let me show you one thing more. We haven't stopped here, right? 
So I will now set back my license once again. And simulating the case that I actually am a user which um, installed Yuma Lab and have a trial version, that because that's um, the case which usually, usually um, our users see. So I registered with my um, account, and um, again, I'm stopped here at this, at, at this screen. So the reason for this alternative is we are unhappy with the break in the user journey, right? Um, actually, we do not want to, to send the user here, if he clicks on subscribe, back to the web, because at some point, you all know, we will, use the, we will lose the user at some point. And so what we did is once the user now click here on subscribe, he is still in his IDE without any um, break. And once he clicked here on subscribe now, he is in the background again, every uh, process is um, executed, li license checkout and so on. And uh, once he clicked done, he's directly available um, to, use, to use the product without any hassle. So, um, yeah, as I said, the user can, can continue using the IDE. And, um, it's meant to be like an app store, as you know it from the Apple store or from the, from the, from the Play store, right away without any, uh, without any play, uh, break. So that is what we call um, the other checkout. So let's go back to the presentation. So, um, Yeah, it, it's, it integrates anything you need to monetize and sell developer tools or any other Eclipse-based um, product to Eclipse users. It includes um, everything from an identity and access management and um, to the end-user license agreement over licensing and subscription to global payments and billing. Um, it helps tool vendors with scaling and go-to-market, and it hopefully makes the Eclipse ecosystem a bit more uh, competitive again. In short, the purpose of the other checkout is to make it for Eclipse users and vendors as easy as possible to offer, search, find, try, buy digital products on, on an easy way. And of course, boost up the Eclipse ID again with better products and healthier um, businesses. So, you already saw the user, ca um, the user journey if a user wants to buy something. But it, what is actually if you want to integrate it? So, um, and I also want to show it to you. So we tried to do it as, as lean as possible, right? And um, also just jump back directly to our uh, web page here. So as you see, it's live. And um, so what we now do is we um, creating an account by integrating um, the web widget. So does anybody have a name for a product? So then we just name it. Oh, okay. Da, da, da. Wait a second. Ah, so now then let's just start right away. So as I said, so we now creating a new uh, a new user with um, to to integrate the the web widget. So let's just start with um, yeah my new product company is my new company and the prices let's say. 12 euros. And as you see, everything we have to do now is we just have to um, copy the script here. And I just prepared a very lightweight um, HTML application, as you see here. So there's really not a lot in this. And um, so we just have to copy it from here to here and to here. And now let's go back to our. Um, 
to web page. So that's our new uh, new web shop. And um, everything a user now have to do is he click on subscribe for a monthly license, and right away he can add his credit card data, SEPA um, stuff for for Europe, and of, and of course um, PayPal, and it can actually be um, already purchased, and um, also a valid invoice is uh, is generated. So in this case, it was a monthly subscription. You see, it was like 12 euros, and everything is done, paid via, via credit card. So pretty slick to implement um, the web shop. But of course, what we also saw was um, the in-app integration. So uh, how, how to actually do that. And um, I prepared a little demo on that here. So what you see is um, the Eclipse intruders. You, you all know Space Invaders, right? It's a little game which uh, now is um, the, li the license is, is invalid on that point. And as a user, if I want to to play um, um, Eclipse Intruders, I would have to purchase and subscribe. Uh, would click here purchase or subscribe. But let let's have uh, a look into the code how to actually um, implement that on that point. So um, yeah, there's a little a bit of boilerplate code to actually in initialize the plugin, but I guess all of you have have already the plugin. And um, the only thing is to really trigger the um, subscription uh, or the in-app checkout is basically adding um, this one line of code to open the open the checkout. And um, that's that's it on that point. And of course, consuming the update side to uh, to be able um, to access this API here. And um, yeah, once we click here now on purchase again, you see we already uh, logged in because we, we bought before and uh, we can click here on continue by now and right away the, the, the license is, is bought and here we can start with playing um, the Eclipse intruders. So just a couple of uh, lines of code and we are ready to sell our software on that point. So it's all included in a single library, as I said. Everything else made is pretty simple. And um, last but not least, as I told you, so we started with Humor Lab. I want to share uh, the results we had with the Yatta checkout from Humor Lab. Um, we, migra we migrated our own, prod our own product, Humor Lab, um, to the Yatta checkout in a, about one and a half year, years ago. Um, and you what you see here is all of our online sales since um, 2010. I got to add that um, we stopped uh, doing marketing for Humor Lab in 2015 and we stopped building uh, um, essential new features in 2016. And um, here on March 2016, uh, uh, 2021, we integrated the Yatta checkout in, in our uh, Humor Lab. And um, so what you see is our um, sales for Yuma Lab went through the um, roof, right? Again, we have achieved far more with less. And um, what this shows is convenience beats everything. Just by uh, um, building a very lean process that a user can buy um, brought our um, conversion rate to the top. In numbers, we increased our Yuma Lab product revenue by over 10 times within one year. And um, the Eclipse in-app checkout generated around about over 80% of additional sales for us. So, and this because we have improved our conversion rate from trial to purchase um, by nearly 13, uh, 13 times. Um, yeah, and of course, then reduce our customer acquisition costs um, by about 90%. Actually, we are now thinking um, about investing in additional features and re-implementing re the front-end of Yuma Lab. Um, for example, by migrating to a, a web-based front-end. That wouldn't have been possible uh, without the improved results we, we made with the Yatta checkout. I can assure you that this way, beyond all of our that, that this way is a way beyond all of our expectations we had before with this. And um, yeah. We also will invest now more in the Yatta checkout and um, of course um, also more in the Eclipse IDE. So we think 
this might change everything for the Eclipse IDE and, uh, of course, for contributing members um, or the whole developer community as a, as a whole. And um, yeah, this can actually turn the tide for the Eclipse, for the Eclipse IDE for the better. And um, yeah, of course, this had worked for us as a tool vendor. It most likely also worked for you. So, and thank you very much. Wait, I was said I should give you a microphone. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask questions. If you don't want to answer, uh, I'm going to ask questions about your business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, feel free. <laughs> um, so you had a really yeah, like huge increase. Um, Is it working? That's great. Um, a very big increase uh, in, in your sales. Did you like change anything else about your marketing story? Or and no, we provided actually we provided um, access to our uh, that, that did, we provided the in-app store. So we did not um, change any um, substantial um, new feature. It was only the access to the tooling. Just the access to the getting getting the easy license. That's the only change you actually made. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And it's not like one company suddenly said like, okay, I buy. 500 or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, as, as far as I see, it's pretty widespread. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, very impressive. Thank you. So, over there, can you give it? I, I may have two questions. And uh, again, I did not, do not expect answers. Um, <laughs> how much effort was it to develop the Yata store? Or the whole thing that you presented? I forgot the name, sorry. Well, as a whole, we, um, we started to think about and work, uh, work about that uh, three years ago. So actually, it's in the market. We, we we think about that for a long time. But um, so the actual development, especially for that, was three years ago. Three years ago. You you are now also uh, commercializing that product as a product. Um, yeah, we released um, the Yatta Checkout as a product two weeks ago, and um, it can be used um, for, from everybody. So and. Of course, in terms of uh, a business model, it's like uh, free to use, and uh, just every transaction which is made is like uh, in in-app shop is like 15% transaction costs, and the um, web shop is like 5% transaction costs. But th this covers all the all the um, stuff which payment provider costs, licensing, uh, billing, and so versa and so on. Sounds reasonable. If nobody else, I would have one question which I forgot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's gone. Maybe, maybe later. Yeah, apparently your graphs uh, attract suspicious questions. So, <laughs> uh, so, if I recall correctly, six years ago you stopped uh, active development on UML. Uh, I don't know the name of the UML tool. Uh, stopped the marketing, and then the only. Like literally, the only change was that you deployed a version that has yet a, yet a checkout. No change in pricing strategy. No new features. No nothing. No nothing. And then people started buying. Is is that the the key takeaway for me here? Yeah, actually it is. Cool. Congratulations. So, we, of yeah. course, we maintained UML Lab and was and it was always pos uh, possible to install it with the latest version. Mm -hmm. But so there was no feature development. So in terms of pricing. Um, Yum Lab costs around 20 euros, so you could also um, buy Yum Lab before for 20 euros the class diagrams, and um, that's it. Nice. Who else is skeptical? No. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's mine now. <laughs> no, I have a question not regarding your business, but um, so this is for an individual checkout of an individual uh, user. You also have an approach when I, I want to extend the license of an entire team, um, so it's not one-to-one? -one. So right now um, it's like a one-to-one -one license, mm -hmm. so, but we, it's still, as I said, so we actively develop on the, uh, on the checkout. So there will be um, some group model um, business where then it's possible to have some uh, more sophisticated uh, license models. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. floating license or somebody can, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, in our product, we also have a, a licensing mechanism, um, and it has more functionality than just on/off. It 
Um, it, it's something that kind of permeates in the entire product and enables individual features even. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any API in that regard? Uh, yeah, it's basically a basic a basic API, and um, in terms of what what you told, so there would be require a bit um, development from you, but of course um, also always um, interested in features. What is actually necessary for, from this market? Mm -hmm. So that would work by now for you with a bit uh, of uh, implementation work for for you, because um, you had to define the features by by yourself. Um, but also in the future, it might be possible to to actually bundle packages or something like that, which is then. Um, um, also similar to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. you. You partly asked my question because, and in in a B two B market like the, like this tool market, I would have expected that individual licenses are not so important than having some uh, I don't know customer care or some purchasing department where you go and say I sell you I don't know one hundred licenses for your development team, but you sh now show us the exact op opposite. So that even in a, such a B2B market, the individual developer buys the license or the, however they buy it because they, they, in the end they have to get somewhere the money back. This would not be individuals like I do it as hobby or... Exactly, exactly. So there are some uh, commercial or company credit cards um, um, using that, I guess. Um, but right now it's just the 1.1 1 .1, um, 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 yeah, direction. But um, you, you asked the right question. So the, the, the big challenge, or our one of our next milestones, is to actually enable that so that we, that the corporate can um, yeah can buy like a, a budget or something like that, and then the um, the engineers whoever can can uh, buy fr buy these plugins from from the budget or so on. Or there are several license models are, are possible in that way. Uh, do you have any kind of uh, license monitoring? Like, how are they used? Um, are they actively used? Um, yeah, sure, it's a that is part very, of very important thing to know mm -hmm. which licenses are actually uh, actually used. And um, so we're offering um, kind of an API for that um, to, to get the data for your own product. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> No, ju just a comment. When you're updating the UML modeler, uh, which graphics library are you using for drawing the... Ho, ho. That's a good question. <laughs> if it's based on Gaff Classic, we should talk. So maybe the expert uh, for the UML app model is uh, over there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, totally it's based on Gaff Classic. Yeah. Because we are reviving that. So if you have feedback, so if you have feedback for us, let me know. I, I just said that we are using Gaff Classic and um, planning maybe migrating to web technology stack there, but maybe maybe Gaff Classic revival would be an option as well. We <laughs> can definitely talk. Cool. If there are no questions, thank you very much. So if there are more questions, otherwise we have a booth over there. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs>